Welcome back to Falcons Franchise. We're 2-2 two and two following a loss at the hands of the Saints in Week 4. We gotta get better. And when you look at this team, we do have a new dev trait revealed. It is rookie receiver Quentin Drummond from LSU only has star, which is good, but it's not great. And he is coming off a breakout performance, over 100 yards receiving. And when you look at his career numbers, he's got 133 yards. So he went for 101 or 102 last week, much better than his combined like 30 yards in the first three weeks. We are also unfortunately down to our third string left guard, who is going to be Gregory Northcutt. He is terrible. You guys have been asking for this for a couple of years now in this franchise. I just want to see what I can get for Jesse Bates. Not that I'm going to trade him. Not that I'm even necessarily looking to. I'm just going to get an offer or two. Because the reality is, as amazing as he is in real life, he is really bad for whatever reason for me. Now, what type of offers can we get? Some receivers I'm not especially interested in. Kendall Fuller. Jordan Mailata at left tackle is interesting. Don't hate that. Young tackle from the Jets, Jamal Taylor. Kenny Clark. Iki Aquanu would be excellent. Has not been so great in real life, unfortunately, but is very good here in the game. And we'd also get a first round pick. Wow, that's actually a very good offer. Now, it's not a first round pick this year. It's the year after. But that's a very good offer. Josh Allen, big time pass rusher, DJ Reader. Okay, we can get some legitimate offers for Jesse Bates. Again, not sure that I would trade him. We have a week or two or three to figure it out. Like, I don't know that we're going to be a team that sells at the trade deadline, of course. This is not MLB and we're expected to compete for the NFC South. But I think the reality of the matter is is that he doesn't really help us win. Now, I don't know what a worse overall free safety looks like on the team, if that's what he plays like at a 93 overall, but it, you know, it's something I might consider is getting rid of that contract and probably getting the same awful performance from a different free safety. When is Trey Lance gonna get an upgrade to star dev? It's gotta happen at some point, you'd think, right? Not this week in practice, unfortunately. I am still considering getting the rookie quarterback out of Texas Tech, Jake Meeks, some practice reps and making him a focus player. That's under consideration, just not right now. Johnny Hamilton, block shedding, I think needs to continue to go up. Run stopper is going to be the choice for me. He's got great tackling, hit power, power moves. Tackle goes up even more up to an 84. But block shedding to me is the one thing that really, really needs to improve. I take awareness. Speed's never going to get a boost up. He's just going to be slow forever. He's 382 pounds. Doesn't have to be known for his blazing speed. Just get in the way. But with only 72 block shed, that's all he's doing is getting in the way. Not actually shedding blocks, making plays in the ball carrier. These are things that I'm looking for. But today I'm looking for a win. Austin Eckler, superstar X Factor, has made his way to the Cardinals from the Chargers. And hopefully he proves to be the worst of the two dual threat running backs in today's game. Bijan Robinson, of course, receiving and running threat. Now, we've seen James Conner, but Austin Eckler might be somebody we actually have to worry about in the passing game. We'll see what the Cardinals try to do today. Kyler Murray, always a problem. Very fast. Got to contain him. We'll see if we can do it. And here we go. We are officially underway in Atlanta, Georgia, as the Cardinals take on the other red bird of the NFL, the Falcons. Cardinals wearing the all-white today as Kyler Murray will take the field, and hopefully they don't play all-white. Hopefully they're real bad. Over a thousand yards passing five... I apologize for that. Uh, five touchdowns, one interception for Kyler Murray. But we know what he can do as a runner. Containing him today is going to be a huge priority. We also could consider using a spy as well. We'll have to see what they do with Austin Eckler. And there are lanes for him to run already. Oh, yeah. Cardinals also have George Cormier. Top 10 pick out of Auburn. So we'll have to watch the young tight end take care of him as well. As Jesse Bates ranges over, makes the tackle, helps out Javon Holland. That's a big, big play. And for someone that could potentially get traded here at some point, we need to see more big plays. Here's third and two. Cardinals working their way to midfield. We got to get out to the running back. 
and Dylan Stanley is there, but Eckler holds on. It'll be a first down for Arizona. Yeah, I, I think that's a nice play. You know, Stanley at least keeps Austin Eckler somewhat in front of him. It's not a huge play, but it is a first down, and we're obviously looking to avoid those, those conversions. And there's a flag. Jesse Bates with a nice play on the rookie tight end Cormier. You'd assume this is going to be a holding, but it's not. It's roughing the passer. Johnny Hamilton. I don't even know how he got to the QB with 49 speed or 59. And there's also an injury on the play. It's a rookie who's played really, really well. It is Jose Carrington. He's got some type of chest injury. I would not be shocked to see a bruised sternum that knocks him out for the game. Of course, we do have good depth at linebacker. Troy Anderson will rotate in. We have Dylan Stanley. We still have, of course, Cade Nellis. We have a number of really good linebackers. And it's not a huge loss if Jose Carrington can't go today. It ends up just being muscle cramps. We're going to bring in Troy Anderson for a bit right now. But I'm sure it's still going to be a lot of Deshaun Humphreys, a lot of Dylan Stanley. And uh, hopefully he comes in and just plays great as the rookie Jason Carrington, his brother, allows the catch there over the middle to Hollywood Brown and Jesse Bates letting him have it. Or get in his head, Jesse. Do something. Can't make plays on the field. Might as well let your mouth do the talking. See if you can get in his head. Maybe force a drop or two with Hollywood Brown. I don't think that's going to be too difficult. Murray under pressure, breaks a sack, breaks another Deshaun Humphreys tackle. He broke two Deshaun Humphreys tackles on the same play and gets down to the two-yard line. That's something we talked about. We got to keep him in the pocket. Caden Ellis will rotate in here in goal line. And that left guard jumped. Walk that back. That's a false start. Encroachment. Johnny Hamilton, get this guy off the field, dude. Two penalties in the same drive, and it's second and goal now from, like, the half-yard line. They're going to pitch it. Get out there! And it's a broken tackle for Eckler. DeMarco Helms lets him walk right in. And, of course, we went to the outside in the event that the tackle wasn't even attempted, but all Helms did was slightly slow him down so that he could just walk right up the middle for the score. And this extra point looks iced for some reason. But they make it. All right, Trey Lance, got to bounce back. Our defense clearly is not going to show up today. Either it's penalties or just allowing, you know, 10-yard chunk plays after 15-yard plays, 10-yard plays again. You know, I feel like plaques to go burst the way our defense is shooting ourselves in the foot today. It's not great. Got to figure it out, and we're going to need the offense to play well. They've got a number of good players on defense, but it's you know definitely the weak point of their team, I would say, is we're going to get the ball out to Bijan Robinson. Nice throw and an even better catch from Bijan. That's a tough one. This play has Drake London written all over it. We're trying to get it to him. Just, I just held on to it for too long. Get the fullback out there. Going to be a run left. Bijan is just completely shut down. Are you kidding me? It is the former Falcon here in Falcons franchise, Frankie Louvu. Just nobody blocked him. Didn't hold the block at all. Unreal. And you know, it's amazing playing Riverside Royals Dynasty on College Football Revamped. The crowd is so dead here in Madden compared to the rowdy college football fans. That's one of the things I really love about NCAA 14 and college football in general is the atmosphere. As Murray continues to break sacks, does anyone want to bring him down? Finally, Arnold Ebicady does. Murray was breaking sacks from Jeff Okuda, who was blitzing again. Who was the other guy that came in there? Is it Dylan Stanley? I see number 59. Yeah, Stanley missed him first, then Okuda. Finally, Ebicady gets him. And we might blitz again. Let's pass commit. Let's be sure that we know this could easily uh, be a run. And there goes Murray. He's contained. And down he goes. It's Ebba Katie again. Deshaun Humphrey was, uh, was also there. And it's going to be third and forever for the Cardinals. And we know this is going to be a pass. Let's blitz Dobbins. Oh, we're going to get in there. It's a screen. Murray was under pressure. Couldn't really go anywhere with it. That's a great way to bounce back on defense. We blitzed the hell out of them, and we finally got there. 
Rashid Shaheed should have a good return here. Oh, nope, 37 wasn't blocked at all. Okay. Yeah, why would I even open my mouth? It, it looked like we were going to have a ton of space, but the one guy we needed to block was not blocked. Drummond going to come in motion, and we'll finally snap the ball. We get that to Drummond. We can. Nice catch. Surviving a ton of contact there. It'll be second in inches. I love that. Now, I think... I think we could go play action here. If you guys have watched the channel for long enough, you know one thing. Maybe more. Second and inches is my play action shot time. Get it to Kyle Pitts. Lob it over. I high pointed. I hit LB. Why is that on a line? Baker's 5'9". Throw it over him. That's insane. Here's third and inches. And that's part of the reason why I love second and short play action pass deep shots. And that wasn't especially deep to pits, but it should have been a nice play. Is because, it, you know, you can feel pretty good about converting on, you know, third and short. To e especially fourth and short, depending on where you are on the field. So you kind of have like back-to-back -back runs to get it. And there goes Bijan. It's a nice gain of 10+. plus. And if we can get Freight Train activated on him, his Superstar X-Factor ability, Bijan's going to end up being unstoppable today. And, of course, when he plays well, we typically win. Here's play action. Throwing up deep. Kyle Pitts. Overshot him. All right, it's third and ten. Buda Baker, I expect to blitz here, which could leave Kyle Pitts absolutely wide open. Let's see if that's what happens. And it does. There's Pitts, and Kyle Pitts walks into the end zone. Trey Lance diagnoses the blitz early, moves Kyle Pitts out to the slot, and says, just say, hey, run straight. They make no adjustment. That's what's going to happen. Pitts walks the runway just like he walked into the end zone. Big touchdown as we're going to tie things up. Love to see it. Good way to bounce back. And it all started with the defense. You know, you hear the, the term complimentary football. It basically means just playing well. It's kind of a stupid phrase in my opinion. Complimentary football just means your defense and your offense is playing well when you're talking about it as a team. Uh, now, you can, you can like, say it in a bunch of different ways. Oh, like, the, the run and the pass is balanced. But usually it's, you know, the defense is playing well as the offense is. That just means, like, being a good team, which is why I think it's kind of stupid. But, yeah, our defense gets a stop, sets up the offensive score. Gotta love that. And we'll see if our defense can come out and make a play again. Give me a run left. We, we just got to contain Eckler today. That's not a good way to do it. We'll see if the Cardinals decide to snap the ball one more time here in the first quarter. And they do. It's going to be another pass out to Eckler. Stanley's there. But they've clearly found a matchup they like. When we come out in man coverage, they're putting Eckler out on the wheel and saying, hey, we don't think Dylan Stanley's fast enough to make a play on the ball. And even though he's incredibly fast, they'd be right. It's just too much space to go. But... Of course, the only way that beats us is if it is a wheel route from Eckler out of the backfield, but they've run it twice now. They've run it twice. So it's something we're going to have to look out for as that is completely swallowed up. Look at Javon Holland. Big free agent signing. He comes out and makes a nice tackle. It's going to be third and two. I don't really want to pass commit here. I am going to contain. Tell me Deion Dobbins did not jump off. Thank you. It's finally a false start. I could have sworn the left guard jumped earlier when I when I called for the false start uh, when they were near the goal line. We didn't get the call, but finally we do get one. And we just had our linebacker, Deshaun Humphreys, drop away from the only route he had to cover. But Jesse Bates finally does something. He injures Austin Eckler. And that's all you had to do, Jesse. Go out and make a play. He might be safe on this team. They got the first down. Whatever. Good luck functioning on offense without Austin Eckler. That's why Jesse Bates is the ultimate team player. Uh, this running back can't do anything. Javon Holland slows him down. Dalen Stanley wraps him up. And that actually is an extremely highly drafted player. Is that Landry Hubbard? It is. Landry Hubbard... 81 overall backup running back was his top five pick out of Vanderbilt. 
They had two top five picks in our first year of the draft. Landry Hubbard being, of course, one of them. The other one was the tackle that I believe got drafted to the Colts. So this one actually might not be so bad. They actually have some depth outside of Austin Eckler. It's a run, and they have space up the middle. Okay. Yeah, their running game, just really their use of the running backs in general, just both catching the ball and running the ball has been very good today. Eckler was off to a really nice start. It looks like they're not actually going to lose a beat here uh, with Hubbard. See if we can slow him down. Here's a slant. Just didn't cover it well at all. It's another easy first down. It's been too easy for Kyler Murray so far. I think the way to beat them is to not let Kyler hold on to the football, blitz the hell out of him, and force that football out. That's the way to do it, in my opinion. And it's the worst angle to the ball I've ever seen from Javon Holland. It's like he wanted to get blocked. Really made no effort to run after the running back, which you'd think you'd want to do if you were trying to tackle him. Just awful. I mean, check this out. And I'm not saying it wasn't well blocked, but I mean, Holland just literally ran into a pancake. He thought it was a special at IHOP. Just sprinted right into it. Got murdered. Give me a kickoff return touchdown, Quentin. Yeah, it's close. Oh, wow. What a return. You're going to see some B. John Robinson on this drive. That's what I expect to see. And there he goes. Look at Bijan Robinson gets the edge in the corner. Buda Baker in pursuit. Johnson in pursuit. Bijan huffing and puffing and inside the 10 on a monster run. Couldn't find the end zone, but sets us up for a score. Bijan just on a simple inside to bumped up outside run on the jump cut. Just bounced it outside, found a lane and nearly found the end zone. He's just really lost a lot of gas at the end. I assume we're going to see Tyler Algier now, and we do. So this could be the perfect time to target Madsen in the end zone, maybe London coming across. There's play action. They don't bite. Going to run with Trey Lance. There's some space, and that's a nice play down to the four. I'm going to try a toss to the short side of the field here. It looks like it's blocked extremely well, and now Bijan walks into the end zone. Our scores so far have just been walking right in. And that is music to my ears when that happens. Another great celebration by the Falcons. And you know what? I Here's what we need to do. We need to find a way to go ahead in this game, not just answer when they score. Because right now, we, we've just been answering. When they score, we score, right? When they don't score, we don't score. We need to figure out a way to actually go on top, extend a lead, and that just hasn't happened so far. And the reason is, is our defense is not stepping up today. That's for sure. And on offense, when we try to throw the ball, it doesn't work. We're going to run the ball more when we can, and we're going to blitz the hell out of Kyler Murray. And if he makes plays against the blitz, all right, congratulations to him. But I'm going to bet and say that he won't. Quick throw out to the flat. Javon Holland, you got to wrap him up, but he can't. And Cormier gets the first down for Arizona. Yeah, we are not a team that tackles especially well. And that has been apparent today. We are not doing a great job. Oh, there we go, though. Arnold Ebicady. Is he up to two sacks now? Two and a half sacks? I think he's at two and a half. Arnold ebicady has been flying. After Kyler Murray today, we need more blitzes. If Clark Phillips just goes ahead and takes the right tackle here, leaving Ebicady wide open, that'd be sick. As Murray under pressure misses the throw. It's going to be third and 16. This is what I'm talking about. This is where we need to step up and make a play. Pass commit. Contain Murray. I'm not going to spy him, but we got to be aware of that. That he could definitely take off. Looks like it's some type of tight end screen almost with no blocking. And I don't think they're going to get into field goal range. Corey Bohorka is going to come on to punt. Rashid Shahid, we need a big return here. Don't let him pin us. So that's a shit punt. Okay. We'll get the ball at the 27. Two-minute offense. Chance to take the lead before the half. Got to feed that man. Number seven. Get the ball in the hands of that man, B. John Robinson. And I actually think based on their defense here, a draw could be the perfect call. That looks pretty good. 
And Bijan's just show, uh, so shifty in the open field. We know that he's going to be pretty much able to at least make one person miss every single time he touches the football. But time is not exactly on our side. Can't really run the ball too much, but we don't want to become one-dimensional at this point. But third and two, we probably run here again. Just over a minute to play. Ooh, I did not like what happened there. Arizona calls a timeout, and uh, that's just three straight runs, and we didn't get it. That was pretty awful. Well, I don't really know what to say. Uh, you know, I'm trying to run the ball because that's what works, and then we run the ball three times in a row, and we get eight yards and then punt. Now Arizona has a chance to answer, and that's about the worst thing that could have happened. And this is what I talked about. Whenever we get a stop, we're incapable of moving the ball for some reason, and maybe it just is... Uh, you know, having too one-dimensional of an offense. And somehow that's going to be completed. And maybe we just need, do need to keep it balanced and do a lot of play-action passing, get Trey Lance on the move, and not get locked into, oh, well, we have to run the ball. We have to run the ball. No, we, we can't pass. We have to run. Javante Nails injured for Arizona. Jeff Okuda with great coverage on that play. Surely can pass commit in this spot. We're in man coverage, though. Uh, we're going to back these guys off. Quick slant, and it's a drop. This would be a great spot for a Deion Dobbins sack. We're going to check down. Taking a deep shot. Jesse Bates in coverage with the interception. Get up, Jesse. Run, Jesse. Jesse, it's time to cook. Jesse Bates with the pick. Potentially on the trade block. He goes out, and he shows you why he shouldn't be. Murray takes a deep shot one-on-one. -on -one. Puts a lot of air under that football. Moon ball down the field. Jesse Bates plays it perfectly. Goes airborne. Elevates at the right time. Takes away the football. And that's a big turnover to keep Arizona out of the end zone before the half. Oh my goodness, Jesse Bates. This is the guy that we expected when we started Falcons franchise. A true ball hawking center fielder. Middle of the field deep man that can just go up and take away any deep shot. Hasn't necessarily been that in this franchise, as the CPU just doesn't really throw it deep very often. But that's a lot of range, and that's a great play. Absolutely love that. Not a great decision there, probably, for Murray, but we need him to make a play in those spots, and he did. Okay, 19 seconds. How do we get in the end zone here? Rashid Shahid? All right, that's a little dangerous. They read the outs perfectly, which we don't even have to go to the outside. We have timeouts. I don't know. We have flexibility here. I didn't want to do that. I want to get streaks out on the field. Streaks can run past press. We know this. All right. 15 seconds. Who wants to get open? We're sacked. We're going to... Oh, man. We're going to run some type of weird run here. All right. It's going to be... <laughs> it's going to be this little jet sweep. 11 seconds to go. Just don't get safetyed. This is a play where we shouldn't get safetyed. There's Drummond. Just stay in bounds. Let him burn that timeout, and we'll punt. A waste of the pick, but um, all right. At least we're tied going into the half. Really weird half. Got to play better in half number two, and Arizona has no time. That is a weird half of football. 14-14. See you in the third quarter. And here we go. Third quarter. Starts with a Quinton Drummond return. I thought there might have been space there for a second. Instead, he only gets one more yard than the touchback would have given us. As we look to get Bijan going here in the second half. One big run. And a nice run. In the whole first half. Other than that, he actually was subdued a little bit. But it was an awesome, awesome play. And uh, we're going to try to get him going a little bit more. That might get Freight Train activated, you know. Eight rushes for 108 and a touchdown. Again, it was a good half. But it could have been better. And I think part of that is because we're starting... I mean, look how small he looks at left guard. We're starting, like, nobody there. He looks like a tight end. But Bijan, I mean, he can do it all on his own sometimes. Look at that run. Yeah, he's going to dominate in the second half. Freight Train is a really good ability. And when you get Bijan's X-Factor going... He's pretty much unstoppable. Unless you take him off the field, and, and it's Tyler Algier. Then he becomes a little bit more stoppable. And the Cardinals are showing that. 
Now, Jeter's had a not good day in short yardage situations, and that's the only situation where he can really make an impact. He's the short yardage back. A great route from Pitts. Get down with the football. Oh, the football got down. He dropped it. Kyle, third and nine. Pitts open, couldn't connect. Oh, my goodness. What's it going to take to take the lead here? How long is this field goal, by the way? 57? Indoors? They wanted us to punt? Are you joking? You know who we have kicking? It's the young god. Young Way Koo. That kick is up, and that kick is good. Finally, we take the lead, 17-14. From the logo goes Young Way from way downtown. 17-14 defense. Keep making plays. Make a play. AJ Terrell's going the other way. The definition of making a play. AJ Terrell steps in front of Rondell Moore, and it's a pick six. It's been a while. It has been a long time since we've seen that, I believe. AJ Terrell undercutting the route, going the other way. Touchdown. And that is how you extend a lead. I've been looking for this the entire game. Who is going to be the guy that comes out and makes a massive play here in the second half? It's A.J. Terrell. We've had trouble scoring on offense, so A.J. Terrell does it on defense. To run to the left. Jose Carrington back in the game, by the way. Hubbard just buying all sorts of time. Look at the patience. Oh, it's play action. Perfect time for play action, and that is a big play. Okuda just can't keep up with Rondell Moore. Jesse Bates in there as well. You know, they're running the ball so well. That play action was... I mean, it looked really convincing, to be honest. Here's first and ten. We're going to show pressure in the A-gap with Stanley. Although we're not actually going. Second and ten for Murray. Kind of left the middle open there a bit. Humphreys can't make the tackle. Terrell kind of can. It's Jose Carrington in the end who does. I mean... Rondell Moore took a bunch of big hits, but uh, ends up shaking it off, walking it off, and it's third and inches. We're going to blitz John Graves and just cover the middle with Stanley. Didn't really even let me switch on to him. I tried multiple times, but uh, it didn't let me for some reason. And I know about the directional switching, believe me. I can get to Humphreys, Dobbins, back to Holland, over to Bates. Just didn't let me do it for, for some reason on that. As, ooh, nice juke. Football came out. It's recovered by Bates in the end zone. Take it out, Jesse. I thought we had more space. Ooh, they're going to call that a touchback. That doesn't really make any sense to me. How would that ever be a touchback? Landry Hubbard takes a big Javon Holland hit. Jesse Bates recovers. And it's Hollywood Brown who ends up forcing Jesse Bates out at like the five. And they just give us the ball at the 20. So for those who don't know, if that was recovered in the end zone and then, oh, I don't know, kneeled down or walked out of bounds in the end zone, that's a touchback. That goes to the 20. Now, if Jesse Bates stepped out of bounds there, that would have been down where he stepped out, but he didn't, right? I don't know how Hollywood Brown gets back in there to make the play. When I'm taking this out, I see all these different players just get in the way a little bit. How does Hollywood Brown make this tackle? Because if he doesn't, Look at the space. That might have been a touchdown the other way. Like, actually. But for some reason, we just have the ball at the 20. Which is super weird. See if we can make the most of it. Yeah, Bijan's just a freak. I mean, what are you doing? He's averaging 14 yards a carry right now. First and 10, we're going to pass. But I was looking at Bijan. We're going to go underneath to Drummond. Drummond's got a decent bit of speed to him as well. And that was only the 11th attempt and 4th completion for Trey Lance. I think 2nd to Drummond as well. So they're building a little bit of a connection. Although it's been difficult. This feels like a deep shot to Drake London if he beats Press. But Kyle Pitts seems more open to me. That's a great ball from Lance! And Pitts again cannot make the difficult catch today. I'm just waiting on Bijan to be uncovered. Now we're going to go to Pitts. Pitts is finally going to catch it. Let's go, Kyle go Kyle and that takes us to the end of the third quarter starting to really really play well here in the second half great quarter for us we go up by 10 defense is playing well enough 
I mean, yes, if we don't force a fumble there in the end zone, who knows what happens, but we did. We did force it. So I'm not really worried about it right now. And uh, that could have been a bigger play with Bijan, but six yards isn't too bad. Bijan could break 200 today pretty easily. And I don't think we've seen him come that close to 200 since his rookie year. But he's just, you know, trucking ahead. Play action on first and 10. Linebackers don't bite. Trey Lance stepping up. Trey Lance looking to run and doing a little weird dive ahead for four. Love this play. Play action. Look for somebody to throw to it's Neil Madsen. And it's just, it's easy yardage. It's, you know, almost like a run when you go with like a design rollout to a quick pass. You know, somebody's going to end up being open almost every time on one of those. And that's why it kind of confuses me why more coaches don't get, you know, inexperienced quarterbacks on the move a little bit more. And not necessarily with, you know, designed runs or anything, but just little rollouts, cut the field off, make reads only on one side of the field. And a lot of the time, like this play that with this kind of designed sprint out, it's just a quick throw to the flat. And it gets open a lot. And... Bijan is kind of the most open. They got kind of bumped there, though. I'm just going to throw it away. Second goal from the seven. Great block by the left guard. And Bijan powers into the end zone. Touchdown number two for Bijan Robinson. And we are rolling the Arizona Cardinals here in Atlanta. Murray's going to throw a pick. Jose Carrington, please. That's the game if he catches that, for sure. Now... We're looking good already, but I wouldn't say it's over. Would have been over with an interception there. I would have felt really good about it. Oh, this is a screen. Get out there, Jose. Forces him back inside at least. And we're able to rally and tackle. Third and three. Cardinals obviously in four down territory. So let's just blitz. Now, we might expose ourselves over the top here. Certainly a possibility. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Check down Jesse Bates. I kept him in bounds. Clock going to keep ticking. That's fine. Throwing over the middle. Humphreys goes right over his head. And Cormier walks right into the end zone. I guess that, that's what you get when you find the highest drafted tight end since Kyle Pitts. Auburn's Daniel Cormier showcasing the speed. And just walking right into the end zone. We were close. With Deshaun Humphreys, just not close enough. Linebackers don't jump in this game. So you uh, really can't use them in coverage. Cardinals going to try an onside kick. And Rashid Shahid thankfully recovers it. Tried the onside XL package. Won't be doing that again. Don't like the way that looked at all. All right, Bijan. Carry us home. Literally. Because he's got to carry the football. Pretty good, right? Drummond's going to come in motion. Bijan going to go up the middle. And ooh, they kind of shut him down a bit. Third and three. Definitely still have to run in this spot. Even if they stop us, whatever. We're up by 10 here late in the game. Why would they want me to only pass? I don't really like that idea. I really don't. But if we just throw it quickly, I guess it's going to work like a run. So, all right, you've talked me into it. Third and three, gonna snap it. Drummond is open, quick throw. And Quentin Drummond has a first down. And that's not gonna do it, per se, but it's gonna put us in a really good position to ice this game. It's gonna take us down to the two minute warning. And the Cardinals can only stop the clock three more times. And if they allow one more first down, the game's over. And we're in a great spot, up by 10. Just bring us home, Bijan. There's a nice little move from Robinson. There's that first down, and that really should do it. I mean, they're calling timeouts, but it's not really going to do them a whole lot of good. Bijan powers in for touchdown number three. And, yeah, it's probably, like, if you want to be real technical about it, it's probably a bit smarter to just not even score at all and just get the first down and go down immediately, and then you can just kneel the ball out. This actually, believe it or not, increases the Cardinals' chance to win, probably. And you're like, but, like, Art, does it really? It actually does, because now they can get the football back and get onside kick, like, chances at least. 
if they score quickly, who knows? Obviously, it goes from like 0.0, .0 chance of winning, essentially, to 0 0.01. Like the chances are not good, but they are like statistically better because the Cardinals now at least get to possess the football again, whereas they would not have been able to with only one more timeout and four more downs for us. Like, if you want to be real technical about it, but, dude, we're going to win anyway. Take the points. Go up by 17. They're not coming back. Murray under pressure. Dobbins diving and brings him down. Deion Dobbins, the rookie out of LSU. Certainly going to put this one away with a big sack on second down. Murray under pressure again, and now it's Johnny Hamilton. Everybody getting after Kyler Murray. Hamilton making up for some of his mistakes early. That's certainly going to end it. Not covering the running back. Murray stepping up. Football comes loose. Ebicady got to him again. Arizona recovers, but will take over. It's three and a half sacks for Arnold Ebicady. What a day for the Penn State pass rusher. Arnold Ebicady just dominated today. We haven't seen a pass rusher performance like this. I don't think the entire series. Bijan six yards away from 200. I want it. I want it. He's out of the zone. This will be his last chance to get it. And there goes Bijan looking for touchdown number four. Robinson trying to power in is just short. We're going to call a timeout. Whatever. Dude, we want that four touchdown performance. Jump cut. Bijan touchdown. Little salt in the wound. Arizona can remember this. So what? We're moving toward being a powerhouse. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? Absolutely nothing. Fourth touchdown of the game for Bijan Robinson. And it's going to end up being a 45 21 victory over the Arizona Cardinals. Bijan with a day to remember. And he played a little music earlier, celebrating the end zone four times. One second on the clock. This could be your, your final play of the game. They're not even going to return it. <laughs> All right, we'll get one more. As Deontay Hardy's wearing Larry Fitzgerald's number 11. I'm going to be sick. Final snap of the game. See if the Cardinals can do anything. Murray basically with a throw away. Terrell knocks it down. And that is your ball game. A dominant second half from a team that really just didn't do a whole lot in the first half. We stuck with the Cardinals, who I think are objectively a worse team than we are, but dominated half number two. Obviously, we ran up the score a little bit for the sake of some stats for Bijan. I apologize to absolutely nobody. I do what I want. 45-21 final. Trey Lance, 7 for 16, only 99 yards passing, completion percentage under 50, and a touchdown. J.J. McCarthy-ass performance. Rushing, B. John Robinson goes over 200. This really is Michigan today. Four touchdowns, but comparing B. John Robinson to Blake Horm is disrespectful. B. John's in a different stratosphere. Landry Hubbard had a good day on the ground. Eckler got knocked out of the game. We would not see him again. And then receiving, I mean, that tight end, he had a good game. George Cormier receiving for us. I mean, not impressive, but a touchdown for Kyle Pitts, who added two drops as well. Drummond, three for 40. Just didn't really throw the ball a lot today. Didn't have to. Didn't want to. Arnold Ebicady, four TFLs. One for Bates, who had a great day. One for Dobbins. One for Humphreys. One for Stanley. One for Hamilton. And Arnold Ebicady, three and a half sacks. One for Hamilton. One for Dobbins. Half a sack for Deshaun Humphreys. And then picks for A.J. Terrell and Jesse Bates. This is one of the better games he played all series. Also had a forced fumble for Ebicady. Javon Holland. Recovery by Jesse Bates. Touchdown for A.J. Terrell. I'm not even sure how you pick an MVP in this game. Jesse Bates was incredible. Arnold Ebicady was even better. B. John Robinson might have been better than all three. Like, all three. Who would be the... Th Don't worry about it. I thought there was somebody else. Ebicady, Terrell, Bates. E okay, A.J. Terrell was the other. I forgot the name. A.J. Terrell, of course, with the interception return for a touchdown. But... I guess it's pretty hard to beat B. John Robinson's four TDs and 200 yards on the ground. I guess that's probably your MVP. But the defense was great. Love it. Upgrades for Jedrick Wills, who needs to be better as a run blocker. His run blocking is terrible. Run block finesse, I guess, can go up. 
boost agile he goes up to an 82 overall that's a nice boost he was a big free agent signing for us he gets plus one to run block overall kyle pitts with an upgrade how about the dropping uh attribute what's his catch i can't find it for some reason 90 catching didn't look like it today 90 catching traffic and didn't look like it today we'll do possession he goes up to a 93 overall. I'd also take some run blocking in there as well. Catching by one. Short route running. We also got some blocking across the board. I do like that. That's a really nice boost for Kyle Pitts. Just not his day today. Did score a touchdown though. And then for Bijan, I mean, I'd like spin move to go into the 90s, but that and juke move are locked. He's maximum rating on uh, an elusive back, so we got to go power. And that's probably not going to get juke at all. Trucking maybe. Plus three to trucking. That goes up to a 96. Unreal. But that is the episode. Got a much better team in week six. We got to go at Buffalo. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.